Give it up for Chris Cook. Come to the stage, Chris. All right. Get him, Chris. Well, hello there. Um, so, uh, you know, when I got asked to do this, and I was very flattered to do this, and, and Kathy knows me, of course, because I volunteer fundraising for public broadcasting in Hampton Roads as well. It's my friend Kim Wadsworth. Thank you, Kim, for giving my name to Kim. Um, so anyway, the story uh, that I wanted to share with you all, it's about tipping points and the like, and, and I have done a number of different things in my life. And um, when I started reflecting all of that, uh, there is something that kind of ties things together, and that's what I wanted to share with you. My, my late father, and when I say late, by the way, it, I, he's dead. I mean, he's not actually late for anything. I mean, you know, in my profession now, that's a term. You know, people say, oh, I've, I've, I lost my dad. And I'm thinking, where, Walmart, the hardware store? I don't know. Um, but, but at any rate, um, uh, my, my late dad, he worked for one company from the time he was 18 years old till he retired when he was 65. And the reason why he did that was that his whole life, he loved doing his job. That included a two-hour commute each way on the train to go do that job. And he loved his work. And he taught me something that uh, was really inspirational to me. And I've shared it. I've spoken to a number of uh, high schools and grammar schools over the years. And I've shared this because, you know, as adults, we get asked questions by kids. Well, hey, how much does that job pay? Or how much does this pay? You know, and, and it, it, that, that's, not, that's not what's important. These are the three most important things that you'll ever need to know in terms of somebody uh, wondering what's the secret to happiness in your job. If you'd like to take a moment to get a piece of paper and pencil, I'll wait. No, it's really that good. Um, anyway, so, so here, here, here they are. If, if you are doing a job that you just can't stand doing, one of three things will happen to you. Number one, you'll quit. It doesn't matter how much money somebody is giving you. If you are doing something that you hate getting up to do in the morning, you finally will not be able to take it anymore and you'll quit. Or two, you'll get fired because if you hate what you're doing, my guess is you're probably telling everybody you work with that you hate what you're doing and eventually your boss is going to hear that you hate what you're doing and you know, there's lots of people out there who would like to do that and who wants an attitude problem and so you'll get fired. Or third, you'll die because the stress of getting up every day to do something that you hate doing is going to lead to heart disease and strokes and alcoholism and substance abuses and suicide, so you'll die. So those are the three things that happen if you're doing something you can't stand doing. And that, that message always kind of resonated with me in the back of my head. And as Vince said, I've, I've had a, a wonderful run in my uh, career over uh, a lifetime. Back in the late 70s, I started in radio, actually. I was, uh, and for those of you um, under the age of, say, I don't know, 50, um, AM radio used to play rock and roll music. <laughs> there are very few FM stations. Yeah, exactly. There's somebody who remembers. And so a AM radio, I was, I was Captain Crisco, the all-vegetable disc jockey, the overtly talented hubbub on the superstar, wizard of wit, reminding each and every single one out there to look out for the squirrels of the world, kids, because good golly, you know what they're after. But that was back in the 70s. <laughs> And, and, um, and so that, that, that was that. And then I, was, uh, I finished uh, school and uh, went to graduate school, and I became a media research analyst. And I went around all over North America, in Canada and the United States, and I was working with uh, local television affiliates and radio stations and HBO and the movie channel and, and, and all types of wonderful experiences like that and helping people decide what they were going to do with their program. That led to me getting a job um, with uh, Lynn Broadcasting, which owns a bunch of, that back in the day anyway, owned a bunch of television stations. One of them was a client uh, that was in Austin, Texas. And so I went off to become director of marketing and promotion at the NBC station in Austin, Texas. And then I ended up on the NBC affiliate board. And that was back in the 80s when Come Home to NBC was all going on. And we had Cosby and you had Hill Street Blues and you had all these awesome shows. And I was going to Los Angeles and I was going to New York and I was on this Letterman stage. And I was just, I mean, I, man, I had some great parties. It was some great memories. Um, 
And that was back when television was owned by companies like RCA that were actually broadcasters before the light bulb division of General Electric took over NBC, and then things changed. Show business stopped being show business. It started, well, it took the, the show part out of it, and it stopped being as much fun as it used to be. And I know Regina and Kathy are sitting here, and they know exactly what I'm talking about. So, so, so at any rate, um, so that was that, that, that piece. And, I had moved here to Hampton Roads with Wavy TV. I was director of marketing promotion of Wavy TV when that's what brought me to Norfolk. And Lynn Broadcasting got sold to, I think, Mikkel, McCall's Sell Your Telephone or something back in 1990 or so. Um, but I loved being back here. I grew up on the East Coast on the Jersey Shore. I had lived in Lexington, Kentucky, um, Detroit, and Austin, Texas, and now I was back here and I loved being here. And so I decided to stay. And I uh, did a couple different things for a period of time. I was a marketing consultant on my own for a while. I was director of leadership giving for United Way for a couple of years. Um, and then I got hired by uh, the Virginian Pilot. And I worked for Landmark for 15 years, uh, both at the newspaper and in the Dominion Enterprise division. And then something funny happened. I turned 50 six years ago. What the heck happened to that time? I don't know, why are you asking me? Oh, no, I'm sorry, these people out here. So, so anyway, so I, I turned 50, and, and that whole thing I mentioned in the beginning about you know, loving what you're doing, I've been really, really fortunate. I mean, I have had some great jobs, and I have gotten to do amazing, a lot of really, really fun stuff. But I was not having that joie de vivre when I woke up in the morning anymore. So I started thinking, and I thought some more, and I actually spent a, two years talking with friends, making lists to myself, sometimes actually writing them down, sometimes just noting them in my head, and thinking about what I wanted to do with the latter part of my life. What would bring me some joy back into my life every day? And, you know, I'm not stupid. I wasn't going to quit my job. I mean, also, you know, planning financially for me to be able to do something different. Um, I decided that I wanted to be a funeral director. And so that meant that I'd have to go back to school, get another degree, spend three years in a residency, past the national and state boards, and I did all of that. And as Vince said, I'm a funeral director with Holloman Brown now. It is the most rewarding thing I've ever done in my life to be present for people, and by the way, this applies to all of us because none of us are getting out alive. I mean, <laughs> tonight, sure, but not in general, in the long run, because this is a one-way ride we are all on, and you know, being older, going to this profession, I've lost parents, I've lost grandparents, uh, a myriad of pets, a pair of chameleons named Romeo and Juliet when I was a kid. I lost a child. But loss is something that we all have to come to terms with. And being able to be there to be part of helping somebody through that, when I go to bed at night, as much sadness as surrounds that loss that is a common theme to our humanity. We are all connected by the fact that we don't go on forever. So my parting words to all of you is, one, have fun at what you're doing, whatever it is you're doing. And if you're not having fun, for God's sakes, figure out something else to do so you can have some fun with it. Make good decisions because the last decision you make may be the one you make now because we don't know when the fates cut that ribbon and that ride ends. Volunteer, help homeless kids, help for kids. Cook a meal for a next door neighbor that maybe is alone and could use that help as well. And seize the day, carpe diem, because today could be our last day. It might be the first day of the rest of our lives, but today is the most important day any of us have. And that's my story. Thanks.